Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I have the sketchbook tour for you for the collab project I've been doing with my friend Nadia. If you're interested in more information about this collab, you can check out my last video as well as Nadia's. This first piece here you will have seen, it's the one I painted in my last video, and the prompt for this piece was overgrown. I'm going to be showing some of the painting process for all of the other pieces in this sketchbook, but not this first one because you've already seen that. The prompt for the second piece was suffocate. Now I only have a little bit of footage from each one, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of how my process was going for each of these pieces, and the bit I wanted to show you for this piece in particular is just kind of carving out the background. I really really love this process of creating and utilizing negative space, so I was just kind of going around the outside and defining the edges of this character's hair and where I wanted the areas to be darker in the background, and that was a lot of fun. I'll be doing that again in a future piece. For pretty much all of these pieces, I'm going to be using mostly my silver black velvet brushes. I know you guys ask a lot about the brushes I use. I usually leave links to like my favorite set in the description of my videos. That flat one in particular I think was a, a size one half inch. So if I'm using anything other than what's listed in the description, I'll try to let you know during this video. The next piece, the prompt, was Truth Giver, and I had a lot of fun working on this piece. I changed up my process and how I usually do things. I usually kind of stick to either a cool yellow or a yellow ochre if I want something a little bit warmer. And this time I used the warm yellow that comes with this Cotman set that Nadia sent to me. And I tried to use this warm yellow in conjunction with a few other colors and it felt really strange to me to be switching up, you know, such a fundamental color for me and which yellow definitely is. So it really definitely changed my process more than I thought it would, you know, making the adjustment of just one color. This is the oval wash brush in size 3 quarter inches if you're curious. And as I experienced and talked about in my last video, I did have some issues with layering when it came to this paper. And whenever you're experimenting with new art supplies like I was with these watercolors as well as this paper that I don't use very often, um, it's just, you know, it takes some learning, it takes some getting used to, but overall I was really happy with how this little piece turned out. The prompt for this next piece was Wisdom, and this was the only piece where I used something other than the set that Nadia sent me as far as paint goes. I was really missing my Payne's Grey by Daniel Smith, and I had the idea of carving out these strands of hair and kind of leaving that space white, and I really, really wanted to use Payne's Grey. On the page opposite this one where I was doing swatches, I was seeing how close I could get to this color by mixing several colors from the set that Nadia sent to me, and it just wasn't the same as my Payne's Grey, so I went ahead and used that for the background. So this was um, the only time as far as paint goes that I veered outside of what she sent to me, and it was really fun to be honest, and I kind of learned that other watercolors that I'm more used to using do react differently with this paper. So I guess it wasn't just the individual supplies that I struggled with, it was also just the combination of this paint and this paper, but ultimately it kind of helped me to keep things looser and maybe less refined, and that was, I really, really needed that. This last piece, the prompt was Rebirth, and I did a few thumbnail sketches and I kind of had a pretty good idea of what I wanted, but I was also by the end of this project, I was being really hard on myself because things weren't turning out exactly how I wanted them to just because I wasn't as familiar with these supplies. And I was kind of being really hard on myself and thinking about the art I had created and comparing myself to other people, which is a big red flag, of course. And um, it was outside of the realm of constructive criticism or growth, and I was just really being really hard on myself. So. I ended up keeping this piece really light and going and starting to think of this sketchbook as a whole as more of a collection of concepts. And I mentioned this a little bit on Instagram. I was trying so hard to make beautiful, refined, finished pieces on every page, kind of. In my mind, that was what they had to be. And 
they weren't turning out that way for me. Um, and I was kind of beating myself up a lot and I was really kind of emotionally and mentally drained by the time I got to this last piece. So I decided to just let it be loose. I think I only used one layer of watercolors and I kept things, um, I don't know, just super loose. I know I've said that like a billion times. And then I went back and kind of reinforced the pencil lines to bring the figure back out and let that really be the focal point. And I added some water soluble graphite to the background and some texture with a graphite pencil. And I just let this one, and I just let this one be what it is. And I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing the process of all of these sketches, pieces, illustrations coming together. I had a lot of fun interpreting the prompts that Nadia gave to me and I've absolutely adored seeing the pieces that she's been creating over on Instagram and I cannot wait for you guys to see her video as well and I'll leave a link to that down in the description. Please do check it out because I will be doing that as soon as I can and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much again for taking the time to watch it. Sorry that it's a little bit late. The week has been a bit crazy. And I will see you all next week. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. Bye.